This video will review five practice questions from the Private Pilot Knowledge Exam and show viewers how to calculate density and pressure altitude, takeoff distances, fuel planning and crosswinds when landing. Determine the pressure altitude at an airport that is 1,386 feet above mean sea level with an altimeter setting of 29.97. To solve this problem, we need to interpolate to find the pressure altitude conversion factor. Notice the difference in the chart between the standard altimeter setting of 29.92 and 30. Since we know the difference between the two is negative 73 feet, we can divide negative 73 by 8 to get the pressure altitude conversion factor per 0 0.01 inches of mercury. The pressure altitude conversion factor decreases by roughly 9 feet for every 100th increase in the altimeter setting. We then need to multiply negative 9 by 5, since 5 is the difference between the altimeter settings of 29.97 and the standard altimeter setting of 29.92. We then subtract roughly 45 feet from the airport elevation of 1,386 feet MSL to get the correct pressure altitude of 1,341 feet MSL. Determine the density altitude for these conditions. The altimeter setting is 29.25, the runway temperature is 81 degrees Fahrenheit and the airport elevation is 5,250 feet MSL. Like the first problem in the video, we need to interpolate to find the pressure altitude conversion factor. See from the chart the corresponding pressure altitude conversion factors for the altimeter settings of 29.2 and 29.3. Since the altimeter setting is 29.25, we can find the middle number between 579 feet and 673 feet to be 626. Just take the sum of 579 and 673 and divide by 2 to get the pressure altitude conversion factor of 626 feet for the altimeter setting 29.25. Add 626 to the airport elevation of 5,250 to get the pressure altitude of 5,876 feet. Now draw a line from the bottom of the chart just to the right of the 80 degree indicator since the outside air temperature is 81 degrees Fahrenheit. Draw the line up to just below the 6,000 foot pressure altitude line since the pressure altitude is 5,876 feet. See the circle with the X in the chart. Now draw a line over to the left to find the density altitude. Notice from the chart that the numbers on the left indicate thousands of feet. Since the line is intersecting the y-axis of the chart between the numbers 8 and 9, we can see the density altitude is 8,500 feet MSL. What is the expected fuel consumption for a 1,000 nautical mile flight under the following conditions? Pressure altitude is 8,000 feet, outside air temperature is 22 degrees Celsius, manifold pressure is 20.8 inches of mercury, and the wind is calm. See the figures on the right side of the chart when outside air temperature is above standard. Notice the fuel flow of 11.5 gallons per hour, abbreviated GPH, true airspeed of 164 knots, and the manifold pressure setting of 20.8. We can use an E6B calculator to solve this problem. Since the wind is calm, we do not need to adjust the ground speed. If there was a headwind or tailwind, we would need to adjust the ground speed accordingly. Use the leg time function and enter the distance of 1000 nautical miles and ground speed of 164 knots to find the time en route of 6 hours, 5 minutes and 51 seconds, rounded up to 6 hours and 6 minutes. Now use the fuel required function and enter the time en route of 6 hours, 5 minutes, 51 seconds, and fuel flow of 11.5 gallons per hour to find the expected fuel consumption of 70.1 gallons. Determine the total distance required for takeoff to clear a 50-foot obstacle. The outside air temperature is standard, the pressure altitude is 4,000 feet, takeoff weight is 2,800 pounds, and there is no headwind. First start by drawing an arrow up from the standard air temperature to the pressure altitude line of 4,000 feet as illustrated by the yellow arrow in the chart. 
Then draw a line to the right to intersect the takeoff weight line and follow the line down to the takeoff weight of 2,800 pounds. See the blue arrows in the chart. Then draw a line over to the right to obstacle height section, as illustrated by the red arrow. The wind is calm, so we don't need to make an adjustment. If there was a headwind, we would draw a line downward, and if there was a tailwind we would draw a line upward as illustrated by the reference lines in the wind component section of the chart. Follow the line upward since we need to find the takeoff distance needed to clear a 50-foot obstacle. This is illustrated by the orange arrow in the chart. You can see the approximate takeoff distance required of 1,750 feet since it is about halfway between the 1,500 and 2,000 foot lines on the right side of the chart. What is the crosswind component for a landing on runway 18 if the tower reports the wind as 220 degrees at 30 knots? To answer this question, we need to subtract the wind direction of 220 degrees from the runway heading of 180 degrees. Remember, runway numbers are aligned with their corresponding magnetic headings. Since the difference between the wind direction and runway heading is 40 degrees, draw a line on the 40-degree marker on the chart, as illustrated by the blue arrow. Draw a line for the corresponding wind velocity. We would draw the line to intercept the 30-degree arc on the chart, as shown by the yellow line. Next move down to find the crosswind component of about 19 knots, see the black arrow, since it is just to the left of the 20-degree indicator on the bottom of the chart denoting the crosswind. Therefore, there will be a 19-knot crosswind from the right when landing on runway 18 when the wind is blowing from 220 degrees at 30 knots. Thank you for watching this video. Please like the video and subscribe to our channel for more flight training and aviation topics. Feel free to leave a comment in the comments field below.